Dick Smith. I've been a makeup artist for 44 years. What got me started was the fun I had doing monster makeup on myself when I was in college and scaring my classmates. Also, when I had young kids, I made them up for Halloween. And that led me to writing this book, The Monster Makeup Handbook. That tells a lot of easy ways that amateurs can make themselves up. And now I'm going to do uh, more of the same by showing you how you can have fun with monster makeup. I'm going to show you a lot of little tricks, easy things that you can do to have fun with this kind of makeup. If you're going to do monster makeup, you certainly have to have blood, but that's easy. You go to the supermarket, you buy Cairo syrup, you add red food color, two bottles to one large bottle of Cairo, and you get nice blood, safe. Put it in your mouth, it'll even wash out of your clothes. If you want to make thicker, gookier blood, there are some tricks you can do also, and they're explained in the little pamphlet that goes with this tape. All right, here's a cute little trick you can do to make some ugly teeth. I'm using sugarless, fresh bubble gum, which I have kneaded and pulled until it's nice and sticky like taffy. Now, I've got to dry my teeth very thoroughly so it'll stick to them. Then I'm going to stick the, I'm going to stick peanuts, roasted peanuts, dry roasted peanuts, that I've kind of carved and sanded a little bit with an emery board uh, into shape. You'll see what happens. Here we go. And I'll start putting on my pressing in. How about that? <laughs> to make really good looking dental wax teeth, there are complete instructions in the booklet, but let me give you just uh, a quick look at the basic steps. Number one, fold over a half a sheet, put it in warm water, get it soft, mold it around your teeth. From that mold, you make a little plaster model by filling it with plaster. When you take that out, you take another little double piece of wax, uh, just enough to cover the front. You soften that and you press that on your model. And it winds up, say, looking like this piece of wax. Now you take your alcohol lamp, you heat your little metal pen knife or whatever, you melt a socket here for the tooth that you're going to add. The tooth is made out of a sheet of this, uh, a squeezed piece of this ivory inlay wax. You quickly press that into the melted socket, and there you have it embedded. When this cools, you take your little knife and you do your carving. And if you do a nice, careful job, you wind up with a really good-looking little denture like that. Sometimes you may just want to do an individual tooth or a couple of teeth, like a, a, a fangs for a vampire or something like that. Well, you can do basically the same thing. Uh, either you can soften your little piece of ivory inlay wax and press it onto the proper tooth on your model and kind of get it to, to have the right shape. Or you can actually do it right on your own tooth and press it to fit. Then when you get that fit, you take the thing off and you carve it into your uh, fang and then you hold it on with that uh, dental plate adhesive that I mentioned. And you can do a couple of nice little, little fangs that way. All right, finally we're going to do a makeup. Uh, this is Dennis Bolger, a neighbor of mine. Dennis, how old are you? Me too. Oh boy, such a lovely age and we're going to do these terrible things to him. You're going to fall apart before we're finished. I'm going to start on Dennis just by combing his hair because 
uh, it'll give it time to dry while we're doing the makeup. Now I'm going to start putting on the base. I'm going to give him a very pale base. I got these two great little kits that are great for beginners. They have all these colors that are appropriate for horror makeup. Bases, lining colors, and so forth. So here we go. I'm going to take this nice pale color. If you want to use a makeup sponge, that's also a good way, but you don't have to. You can just do it with your fingers. The thing you have to be careful of with a, a light color is that it tends to look streaky on the skin. So you have to fuss with it a little bit to get that nice and smooth. All right, so there, there are the bases on. Now we go to the next step, which is uh, putting on some shadows to make him look a little more gaunt. I'm using a, uh, a gray, very suitable for a cadaverous looking fellow. And I just kind of pat and stroke in order to get a blend. Turn towards me, Dennis, please, thank you. Doesn't need much. Don't put a big gob on your finger and then put it on, you have kind of a mess. Do that under the cheekbone. Do a little at the temple. We're bringing out the skull underneath his flesh. Turn back, Dennis. And now around the eyes, that's the big number here. Darken. See, I never, never put any base up there because I intended to darken this quite a bit. We darken the sockets like the holes in a skull. Look up. do that with your finger, but it's, it really is easier if you get a, a brush about like that. And you can put it on, you can put the color on in a stronger and more blended way. Close again. Right in this spot here, near the nose, it's good to make it quite deep, quite dark. Get that illusion of a sunken in orbit. Hmm, that's looking kind of spooky. While we're at it with the gray, we're gonna take the color out of his lips. Now I'm gonna add some more touches with the gray and you can do as much of this as you want. It can be a little or you can go to a uh, greater lengths. I'll just show you some of the possibilities. You can suggest a frowning look. can accent the cheekbone further. You can accent the nostrils. You can extend the corners of the mouth a little bit. You can paint around the nostril openings. 
to make them seem larger. Okay, there are some basic shadows to make him look a little gaunter and more ghostly. Now we'll put on some powder to set all that. I just use ordinary Johnson Johnson's baby powder. I put it in a can to make it convenient. The idea with powder is to put on, put it on generously. You've got to absorb all that grease to set it. Close your eyes. And then you dust off what hasn't stuck in the grease. And we don't want a shiny vampire. I mean, they're supposed to be dry. Close. I'm using just a cheap blusher brush. Does the job very nicely. Next step. Next step, I'm gonna take a black pencil, eyebrow pencil. It's soft. I'm gonna outline the eyes, make them look uh, more spooky and, and sexier, as a matter of fact. And I'm gonna make his eyebrows fiercer. Close your eye. Just use my finger to kind of blend the penciling. Look way up. Now, pull down the lid, and I'm actually gonna go on the inside, just above the lashes. It gives a really intense look. Try to make, when you're doing the eyebrows, try to make little hair-like strokes. You need a fairly sharp pencil to do that. Uh, you have to sharpen it really with a single-edge razor blade or an exacto knife. Make the strokes upward like this. And about here, Make a kind of a devil peak. I've finished the eyebrows, and I've started to darken the upper lids. This one is already done. See the difference it makes. Here's what I've done. I've taken black. Close your eyes, Dennis. And I've painted it on here and then blended it off with my wide brush. And it really intensifies the vampire eye look. It also needs to be powdered so it won't uh, smear and break up. Close your eyes. There we go. All right, there's Dennis as a young vampire, and he's uh, really looking the part, aren't you, Dennis? Aha! Uh -huh. The teeth, which of course we made beforehand, look very good, and one last touch I think we need is blood. And that, as you may recall, is made out of Cairo syrup and food color. Let's hyp hypnotize him, Dennis. Now, what I've done in the meantime is give Dennis a pair of ears, pointed ears. You know, you can, you can get very nice little rubber appliances. I'll tell you where in the booklet. 
but it gives it a little bit more diabolical look. I thought it'd be fun to take our vampire even further. Let's start decaying him like vampires usually do when the good guys catch up. So here we go. I'm going to glue some skull-like teeth on the outside of his mouth. The instructions for this are in the booklet. This is good old spirit gum I'm applying. It's the standard theatrical adhesive. You take it off with uh, alcohol, spirit gum remover, things like that. <clears throat> Turn towards me, Dennis. These are teeth made out of uh, teeth wax uh, on a nylon net. When I say cheese wax, I mean the, the stuff that covers some cheeses. The, this is what? Bond Bell, I think it was. And it's easy to model. Open your mouth just a little bit. Okay, close. Great. There, okay. We've got those on. Now we can paint all around them and make him look really decayed. I'm just going to powder the spirit gum a little bit, take away the tack. Now, see, Dennis can open his mouth too, eh? Okay. Open your mouth. Blacken up his lips. I'll touch that up later. Now close your mouth. And what we're going to do is paint his face as if he were a skull. So. All this gets blackened in. Now the idea I have here is to show just the lower part of his face decaying. Uh, and so I'm going to make a, a, a kind of outline here. And I'll continue uh, creating this skull-like look on the lower part of his face. I'll outline the tops of the teeth to accent them. And the bottoms. Now I'm going to paint the tip of his nose as if part of it isn't there. Try to make it look a little like a skull. Obviously we can't really take off this portion, so 
It's only an illusion. Okay. Now I'm going to put a white in here where the bone is supposed to be exposed. Okay, so I painted out the nostrils partly to make this look a little skull-like. And uh, I finished painting around the edges of the teeth, darken that, and I put in most of the white now to represent the skull. Turn towards me, Dennis, please. That's it. Let's finish up over here on this side. See, I've made the thing asymmetrical, too. Uh, it's not the same on each side. Makeup's always more interesting if it's, if there's a, one side is different than the other. Now, I've got to put some white on these teeth, make them look more skull-like. Now I've mixed up some blood paste, I'm going to call it. It's nice thick stuff here. I'm going to see if I can give the illusion of torn flesh around the edges of this wound or whatever you want to call it here. Yeah, this blood paste is... Uh, concoction of, a, of a, a pectin material for preserving, uh, uh, making jam and stuff like that. You can get in the supermarket. The, the formulation is in your, uh, in your booklet. It's harmless if you, if you of a, are of a weird mind, you can eat it. What I'm doing now is running a highlight along the edge uh, of this wound to try to give the illusion that it sticks out a little bit above the blood. I put a touch of yellow in it so that <clears throat> it'll look a little different from the uh, pale flesh tone on its face. There we go. Uh, that'll dry in a moment. And that's as far as I'm going to take this stage of his decomposition. Now we're going to start the third phase, the real disintegration phase of our vampire. I'm going to start with a bald cap. This is something you can buy. Uh, and I've wet his hair down in preparation for putting this on to flatten it out. I've also taken off his ears, ear points. You want it to be able to cover sideburns and to be fairly snug. Pull it down and back. Bring your head forward a little bit. Okay. I'm going to uh, cut out the part around his ear. First, drawing a pencil line here to guide me. By the way, this is a latex cap, or rubber cap. There are also pla uh, caps made out of plastic. They're much more expensive, and for our purposes, they're really no, no better than, uh, than this. 
Now, I'm going to put you to work, Dennis. Hold that bottle of gum, please. You don't even, for, for, for this, you don't even have to glue the whole cap. A little bit under this part here, but the main thing is here around the sideburn and in front of the ear. You want to try to get this glued down well. Okay. Make sure this gum under the whole edge. And then put a little stretch on the cap so it's smooth. Press it down. Pat it with your finger. They'll get nice and sticky. And a good thing to really press it down with is take your old powder puff, a little powder on it, and give it a good good powdering and pressing at the same time. Okay, that looks okay. We'll worry about the back later. I'll get the other side. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do to show you the difference, I'm not going to cut the ear out of this one. I'm going to leave it this way and cover the ear so it'll look a little more skull-like. You can do it either way. Now I'm going to turn him around and do the back. You want to leave as much of this shirt tail as possible, because it'll stay on better. And of course, you don't want to glue and do the hair either. So I'm going to uh, trim it off way down here. We've got the cap glued on now, and the next step is to glue on cotton all over his face in little patches. And to do that, I'm using Cairo syrup because it washes off easy, so it's easy to clean up. Regular cotton, I'm now going to pluck out bits of it. and stick it on his face. Now, I'm not doing it in a regular fashion. I'm trying to make it in irregular, lumpy kind of bumps, keeping in mind that when I saturate this with liquid, it's going to be considerably compressed. And the more irregular it is, the better the effect. But don't think about it too much. Just go. Next step after tarring and feathering this poor lad is to um, use some gray body makeup. I'm putting it in a paper cup for handiness. And I've got my little handy brush here. And I start in just kind of working this into the cotton, starting at the edge of a cotton lump so that you don't kind of pull it off. And if you go over the edges, you'll get the lump secured, then you can go over the middle part and saturate the whole thing. And you see it, it lays down considerably. And you'll notice that as I do this, I am purposely uh, making sure that the, uh, I preserve the, the different lumps and thicknesses to get as much irregularity as possible. Well, we've got our ghoulish vampire pretty well covered. Now I'm going to get in and do details. Uh, I want to work around the eyes. I want to have some of it come across the skull and so forth. So I'm putting on more Cairo and I'll glue on specific little bits of cotton. Close your eyes now.
what I'm doing here is in creating some uh, additions to this rotted flesh to try to overhang the eyes a little bit. Uh, It'll take away all the humanity in our young hero here. I've added, uh, as you see, little bits of cotton in certain areas where I want to finish up uh, details and, and get a nice effect of the, the flesh uh, peeling away and revealing the bone underneath. So this is the beginning of that process. All right, now we're going to tear away some of this rotted flesh and try to reveal a uh, bone underneath. Incidentally, if you wanted a makeup like this to last longer, at this stage, you could take liquid makeup, uh, excuse me, liquid latex, and take a sponge and pat it over the whole thing. And that would give you a rubbery uh, coat that would bind it all together uh, very, uh, very strongly. But I'm not gonna bother with that here. Uh, we're not trying to keep this on for a long time. Let's just start in tearing some of this away. going to put paint in there in a minute. Let me make another. I like that. Turn this way a little bit. Let's put one over here for, uh, right in here we'll do. Make a nice flap. All right, we'll go back and paint in here. See if we can make this look like some bone sticking through. I'm going to put a few touches of, of red in here just for the hell of it. Uh, it always kind of breaks it up and looks interesting, even if it isn't particularly logical. And now we're using a lighter shade of liquid makeup, which is going to highlight and lighten this whole this whole thing in a way that will improve it. But too much on the brush. Needs just a little bit on the brush. In fact, I'm going to wipe it down a little bit, make it kind of drier. Okay, there we go. And I'm just using a, a cheap paintbrush here for this. It covers a lot of territory in a general way. And you can kind of pat it on or stroke it on. Brings out the texture. Well, we're about at the end of this uh, opus here. Uh, I need to put a few touches of black for the, uh, for our character. So I'm using the black liquid, and I want to make it darker around the eyes. Close your eyes, Dennis, that's good. And then I'm also going to use it Like in a few other places, I'll go over the head and, you know, maybe like darken a little bit here and there, uh, punch in some extra shadows and accents with a little more black. Let me see the other side, Dennis, turn. Oh, good, all right, now get this eye.
Well, I finished prochking around. I could go on forever, but this is enough. Uh, Dennis, are you really going to wear that home? Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Well, I'll tell you how to take it off. You get in the shower and just rinse, 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 rinse. And uh, don't clog up the drain. And then a little uh, alcohol will take off the spirit gum that remains. All right. Good luck, young fella. I packed in as much as I could into this tape, but of course there's so much I've had to leave out. Uh, if you really are interested in learning more tricks and more fun things you can do with makeup, I do suggest you get the Monster Makeup Handbook. <laughs>